I really wish students didn't waste time on their AP exams blindly using L'Hopital's rule for a limit like this one, because by inspection, you're going to notice that when you plug in zero here for the top and the bottom, you're going to have the indeterminate form zero over zero. And then you're going to find out you'll be using L'Hopital's rule again and again and again until you can finally safely end up with a denominator that does not have a zero. So instead of just blindly using something where it may not be fully appropriate here, why don't we not jump to conclusions and do the following trick instead. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manipulate this equation by bringing out an e to the sine of x term. And you might be wondering, well, how am I doing that? Because on the top, how do you factor out e to the sine of x, given that the first numerator term is just e to the x? Well, remember with the rules of products, I can rewrite that term as e to the x minus sine of x, right? Because when you multiply it through with this e to the sine of x that I brought out, you get back the original e to the x. Now, what's nice about this is now we can use a special rule for limits called the product rule of limits, because now we have this term e to the sine of x on the numerator. I can break this limit up into a product of two separate limit problems that are a lot easier to deal with. Because check it out, on the left-hand side, I don't have a denominator, right? I can just plug in zero from the get-go for x, and that's just gonna become one. Now, what this means is you're going to have an easier problem because now you have one times just the limit on the right-hand side. And check this out. For the right-hand side, what you have in common now is not only x minus sine of x in the power of e on top, but you've also got it in the denominator. And you don't have to do this, but one thing that helps me visually, and it's a cool trick for you to use, is why don't we just do a variable substitution here? I'm going to let u equal x minus sine of x. And then what we want to make sure is because we're going from the letter x to the letter u, because x was approaching zero, we need to see what u is going to approach. And in this case, when you plug in zero for x, you will get zero minus the sine of zero, which tells us that u will also be approaching zero as well. So then when we rewrite this problem as a new transformed limit, you've now got the limit as u approaches zero of e to the u minus one all over u. And you might be scratching your head saying, hey, Dave, if you plug in zero for u here, you're going to have an indeterminate form. So why didn't you just start with L'Hopital's rule from the very beginning? And you're absolutely correct, because when we plug in zero here for u, we're going to get e to the zero minus one all over zero. And this is, yes, an indeterminate form. But check this out. Instead of having to deal with L'Hopital's rule multiple times in this problem and dealing with the crazy product rule expression on the original problem's numerator, we only needed it once here because check this out. After just one application of L'Hopital's rule, where you take the denominator and the numerator's derivatives here and rewrite the expression, now you've got a constant on the denominator. And aha, we don't have to deal with an indeterminate form anymore. Because now when you plug in zero for u, you're going to get this final expression, which tells you your limit, 